Hello, this is Jacob Avila, and what we're going to talk about today is how you can use ultrasound to identify pulmonary edema. So for this exam, you can use any of the three main ultrasound transducers, but my favorite probe for this is going to be the curvilinear probe. If you don't have the curvilinear probe, the phase array will work just fine. Let's talk about what we're going to be looking for when asking yourself the question, does this patient have pulmonary edema? There are specific patterns of artifacts you need to look for, and they're called A-lines and B-lines. There are theories as to exactly how these sonographic artifacts are formed, but I don't believe you need to know how they're formed to be able to identify them and to use them clinically. So let's look at this super high-tech drawing here. So this is a rib and a rib, and this is the pleural line right here. These things down here, these are called A-lines. They are horizontal reverberation artifacts that are generated when there is just air beneath the pleura. A equals air. An A-line means not pulmonary edema. In contrast, these vertical artifacts here are B-lines. They mean that there's extra fluid in the lungs. Now, for it to be considered a B-line, it's gotta be vertical, it's gotta extend from the pleural line all the way down to the bottom of the ultrasound image, and it has to move with respirations. Stonographic B-lines have the same meaning as the curly B-lines that you see on chest x-ray when you have pulmonary edema. Here's an example of an area of the lung without pulmonary edema. So imagine a uh, rib, rib, shadow, rib, rib, shadow. This is the pleural line right here. And this guy right here, this horizontal artifact is called an A-line. A stands for air. It means not pulmonary edema. So these are B-lines. So this is the pleural line right here. And you can see these vertical artifacts starting from the pleural line, extending all the way down. This implies that the patient has pulmonary edema. Need those side by side? Here are two other examples. The clip on the left side of the screen doesn't have pulmonary edema. The one on the right has pulmonary edema. Here you have horizontal artifacts, A lines, and here you have vertical artifacts. These are called B lines. The presence or absence of B lines in of themselves do not necessarily mean anything. In order to be able to diagnose someone with pulmonary edema, you need to see a certain pattern of B lines in a specific distribution. Firstly, you need to divide each hemithorax into four zones. Now, the original study that described the zones supplied this picture that you see here. Now, in the cephalad caudal orientation, or up and down, you use the posterior and anterior axillary lines. Then, in the transverse plane, you're supposed to draw an imaginary line dividing each hemithorax into four equal zones. The only thing I want to mention is that the picture that most people use, which is this one, is a bit confusing to me because in the text of the article, they state that the transverse line should be placed in the third intercostal space, which is a bit higher than how it sits in the picture. It's kind of semantics. I just divide the anterior and lateral chest into four equal zones. Now the posterior region, while it's extremely important when you're looking for types of pulmonary pathology other than pulmonary edema, isn't really that important when you're looking for pulmonary edema itself. After you divided the chest of the patient into these zones, you should place the probe on the chest and look for either A-lines or B-lines. If you see B-lines in two zones per hemithorax, then you have pulmonary edema. Now, a single B-line essentially has no real clinical significance. Two B-lines still essentially have no real clinical significance. It isn't until you have three or more B-lines in a zone is that considered to be pathologic. Personally, I start looking in the anterior lung fields bilaterally because that area is the most specific for pulmonary edema. So to recap, to have a positive zone for pulmonary edema, you have to have three or more B lines. So three or more B lines per zone equals a positive zone. For the patient to be considered to have pulmonary edema, so it's diffuse pulmonary edema, you have to have two positive zones per side. So three or more B lines in two or more zones per side gives you a patient with pulmonary edema. Now, the thing that I have to mention here is that the presence of a positive zone doesn't necessarily mean that the patient has cardiogenic pulmonary edema. B lines technically are caused by any kind of increase in density in the lungs. Increase in density definitely happens with cardiogenic pulmonary edema. The lungs get soggy. But you can also have that with interstitial lung disease, ARDS, pneumonia, atelectasis, pulmonary contusions. All these things can cause B lines. So you have to make sure to look at the patient in front of you and don't use that ultrasound in isolation.